Hi. <laughs> Sorry for the delay. My name is Kristen, and this is Drawing Meditations. I'm really excited to be sharing this with you on live streaming video. I've been teaching classes in person, and I created I like some online stuff, but being able to do this um, sort of live with you is really something new for me, and it's probably going to be awkward. I hope you can hear me. I hope that my bit rate is high enough that you can see what we're drawing today. Um, so please bear with any technical glitches and uh, feel free to comment in the chat if I can tweak something for you. Now, before we begin the guided drawing meditation, make sure you have what you need. You're going to need um, some paper, or if you pre-printed the Motivated by Love coloring sheet, please use that. Um, and you're gonna need some art supplies, like I've got a bunch of pencils. You can use pens, if you like to paint, you can paint, do whatever you want. There's no right or wrong here. Um, today's meditation theme is Motivated by Love. We're gonna explore some thoughts and ideas around this theme as we color or draw. The meditation might help you make a connection with someone in your life who's difficult or divisive. I published this originally in November, 2016 between Thanksgiving and the election and holiday visits, I was thinking about how challenging they can be. Um, to be honest, I think there's still a lot of conversations to be had with people who share opposite views, and this topic is still quite relevant. So that's the idea behind this meditation. So let me tell you a little bit about drawing meditations. It works by giving your logical side, the logical side of your brain, an art technique to focus on, so that the more soft, illogical side, the creative mind, can relax and consider the theme. So you don't turn your brain off or empty your mind. You have something to think about while your body does some work and you can sort of let the other part of your mind go. So today's art technique is color harmonies. That means colors that look nice together. So what I'd like you to do is to choose a color from your art supplies. Um, here, let me refocus the camera. Let's see if this even works. Hang on, you're gonna see my hand there for a second. Um, so we've got uh, all my crayons, my pencils here. And I'm gonna pick one at random, I don't know here, uh, maybe. This blue is kind of nice, right? So I'm gonna use this blue as my primary color and I'm gonna actually even scribble a little bit of it on my page so I can see what it looks like. It's a nice, nice kind of reddish blue shade, not purple. Now I'm gonna to try to find a couple of colors within this pile that I think that I think look nice with this. Now, there are all sorts of fancy rules about ways colors fit together, cool colors, warm colors, color charts, um, combinations that were used many years ago, combinations that are fresh and great, but it doesn't matter. You pick the ones that you like. Maybe pick two colors that go with your primary color. And um, yeah, let's just do that. And we'll meet back here again in a minute or two. I have no idea what this is pointing at. That's something I need to do. I need to get a tripod. So this color, I'm gonna pick maybe something sort of purplish. How does that look? I think that's kind of nice together. Yeah, I like that. Okay, and then maybe a green for me today. Mm -hmm. Maybe I don't like that one so much. Maybe I want. Oh, yeah, that's the color I want. I like that a lot. Okay, so I've got this, this. And then my primary color, which is this blue. Maybe I want another blue as well. Maybe this lighter blue. Yeah, yeah I don't like that at all. So 
do want a lighter blue though. Like this one. You know. Hmm. What about this one? Mm, yeah, that's better. Okay, so I've got. What have I got here? I've got this blue. This purple. This green. All over. Oh, my blue broke. That's okay. If your pencils break, you can sharpen them. That's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use this little stub. And uh, I'll sharpen my pencil while I talk. So once you've gotten a combination that you like, sorry, I'm moving back up here. Once you've got a combination that you like, sit those pencils aside and pick another color. We're going to do two different groups of colors. Um, so pick another color that you like for a primary color. It can be in a similar range that matches the first set, but it absolutely doesn't have to. Um, I'm going to pick this one. And do the same thing. Go through and make a couple of test colors and um, find two or three more colors that look nice together with this primary color that you just chose. For me, I think it's going to be an orange. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. And hmm. So I've got these two colors now. And I think I'm going to kind of go with the, in the lipstick route. So pink. Maybe this red. It's kind of bright. Oh, it's too much like that. Maybe this one. Yeah, that's good. So once you've got those going, um, you just set aside your pencils. Take your time. I'll give you another minute or two. Well, maybe just another minute. We'll be here all night, eh? And don't worry if, uh, like me, you've just colored all over your paper. It's fine. There's either space down here or somewhere else on the page. You can turn it over because paper has two sides. I'm going to turn mine over. All right, let's finish up our colors and move on with the meditation. So. No. Oh, and also, before we begin, um, if you're not using the coloring page, if you're coloring, um, if you're free coloring today, grab a pencil of any color, maybe one of the ones you chose, and draw a circle on your page because we're going to work with a mandala. It doesn't have to be a perfect circle. If you have a circle template handy, like a CD or a, a coffee mug or something like that, feel free to draw with a perfect circle. But mine is going to be a pretty imperfect circle because you know what? It's okay to not be perfect when we're making art. Um, we're going to, before we start our meditation for real, we're going to um, do a little bit of a breathing exercise to sort of clear our minds. We've, we've got our colors. We've got our page ready to color and draw on. Um, so we're going to take a deep breath together to clear our minds and um, get ready for the theme of motivated by love. So let's breathe in together and breathe out through your mouth and do it again. You can close your eyes if you like. Breathe in, hold and breathe out. And one last time, breathe in through your nose, hold your breath for just a second and then breathe out really slowly.
Now, from one of the color harmonies that you created, pick any color, it doesn't have to be the base color, and start coloring around the outside of the mandala, outside of the circle. I'm going to try to set up the camera so that you can see my drawing. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe not. Hang on, maybe. maybe I can do this. This is all very, very uh, ad hoc. I don't know. Can you see that? No, it's too close. I need to put this up somehow. Well, I'm going to draw one handed. I'm going to draw one handed on this side where there's more light. Sorry for the technical changes. I didn't think this through very well. I'm just going to move this over here. Move my teacup. Anyway, so I don't spill anything. There. Now, <laughs> sorry, this is just getting a little ridiculous. I have, um, yeah, I have a paper towel roll as my tripod, so I'm trying to move that around. Um, I'm also holding a pencil in one hand, trying to arrange the cord. Okay, my next broadcast is going to be much more chill and a little bit more, more thought out. Okay, where is this? Hmm, if I do this, move this, put these here, you can kind of sort of see what I'm doing. Maybe. What's that? That's a paper towel. That's paper towels. Paper towels. Okay. Paper towels are not perfect. Hmm. Okay, it's saying my health is bad. I hope you can still see me. I'm moving the camera around too much, and I think it's complaining about that. <gasps> I think I figured something out. Uh, if you could only see what I'm doing, I'm shoving a pair of glasses in this thing. Okay, so there's a gigantic shadow, but I think that's just how it's going to have to be for now, unless this falls and don't fall. All right, so <laughs> let's get back to that meditation. That was not very relaxing, was it? I am so sorry. So like I said before, pick a color and start drawing around the outside of the mandala and I'm gonna set up the scene for you. So you're invited to change colors as you like and uh, you can add patterns in any blank spaces or whatever really looks good to you. Take your time. There's no need to rush and you don't have to finish this. You can come back to it after the meditation is finished. If you're free drawing today, um, I will ask you to draw inwards towards the center of the mandala as the meditation inspires your thoughts. So, almost everyone on the planet is motivated by love. We love ourselves, our families, we love ideas and beliefs. We love places, special places we've been, places we want to visit. We love situations and we love things. And we strive hard to keep our beloved people, ideas, things safe and stable. But each of us doesn't love the same things or in the same measure. It's important to remember that the other side of any divide also loves, even if their motives are different than yours, or their actions or reactions seem extreme. It's easy to understand and feel love when you're calm and things are going smoothly. When you're on top of the situation, you can be generous, kind, and gentle. Coming to terms with other people's love, very different things, is where problems start to surface. It's harder, but even more important, to feel love and kindness when you're anxious, angry, or not in control. You may lash out because you love something and you want to preserve it. Reach deep. Try to let that love be expressed in an open-hearted way. Let me give you an example. Imagine that your heart sings when you see a colorful tangle of wildflowers. But 
Your next door neighbor is happiest when sitting in a shady bower of trees. Can you agree on a way to make both of those things work side by side? Or will one of you be resentful, hurt, or fearful of the other's gardening habits? As you move to the inner part of this mandala, think about how you might handle the garden situation. Use the color harmonies that you created earlier to guide your work. And let one color represent you and one color your neighbor. Can you combine them to make a beautiful drawing that shows understanding, collaboration, and resolution? So in this case, these lipstick colors are going to represent me. And the co other colors I chose, the blues and purple and green, are going to be my neighbor. So what I'm going to do, see if I can create a mandala that allows this to overlap maybe reach out. Can I use the colors to show reaching out and talking to my neighbor, listening to his ideas, finding commonalities in the differences, sharing my opinions, collaborating in places where our love for gardening overlaps. So start your drawing. Don't follow what I'm doing, do your own thing, but I'll keep the camera trained over here. I think it's still we do the right thing. Um, and let's see what we come up with. When time is up, I will uh, let you know, but I'm just going to let you color quietly for a few minutes. And if you want to, instead of thinking about gardening, think about something that's more relevant to your actual life. Maybe you have a dispute with someone that you care about, or a neighbor, or a workmate. Feel free to let this be a time when you can let go and explore it. Because you're going to be thinking about how the colors go together, your mind may open up to some really interesting solutions that you weren't able to think about. And sometimes when we draw, we discover things that aren't even in our consciousness. Connections are come out on the paper that we never planned, didn't foresee. So think about gardening with your neighbor or whatever the problem space is that you're having and see what comes out on the paper. Don't force it, just draw. Think about the colors. Think about how they look together. Maybe your color harmonies overlap a little bit. Some of those colors in the first set might look really nice at the second set. Or maybe they don't.
Okay, just take a few minutes to finish up whatever you're working on. And don't worry, you don't have to finish this. You can come back after we're done talking and fill in any other colors that you want. Maybe you'll even have some more insights. So what you draw doesn't actually matter as much as thinking or not thinking, letting your mind relax while you're working on this. But the last part of the meditation is also important because this is where we synthesize. We take a look at what we drew, we think about the problem that we were thinking about, and we see if we see any solutions in our drawings. So in this case, my gardening case, how I compromise with my neighbor doesn't really matter as much as finding some common ground and being assured that everybody's opinion is acknowledged and respected. And that's pretty much true for any difference of opinion. Make sure that you take some time today to talk with, and more importantly, listen to someone who, uh, someone who has an opinion that's different than yours. What do they love? Keep that in mind. Now, thank you for doing this drawing meditation with me. And uh, if you want to visit my Patreon page, I think I can put up a card. Maybe. If I go to the live control room. See here, this is another thing. I have no idea what I'm doing. Uh, insert slate. Slate in. Okay, so now you should be seeing, I think, the uh, Patreon slate. So if you're interested in this, you can visit my Patreon and get uh, monthly-ish new meditations in video or in audio format. I'm working on both. So I hope that you enjoyed the, uh, the stream tonight. I hope it worked. <laughs> I don't know if anybody was even attached. But thank you so much for coming and being a part of this with me tonight. I'll see you again soon, I hope. And this time, I'm going to have a tripod. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>